Cable 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information, and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome in. It's Talk of the Town uh, for Friday the 13th. Hopefully you will have a lucky day and not an unlucky day. Uh, there will be scattered showers throughout uh, today and tomorrow, and then things looking pretty good for Sunday for Father's Day. You guys got big Father's Day plans? We got. Uh, seeing, we're gonna. Seeing my father. We're gonna go to the North Carolina Symphony thing in Washington. Yeah, uh, it's after the yeah. festival, but on Sunday night they're gonna do a performance on the green down there. Oh, which sweet! Is, yeah, we did it last year sweet. where you take your lawn chair. It's really nice. Who, who's the band? It's North Carolina Symphony. Oh, it's the symphony. The actual said. symphony, sorry. yeah. Uh, Michael was talking to me in my earpiece. I missed that. So the symphony is going to be at the Washington Park. Yep. They, uh, it'll at, be at the not Washington Park at the park there on the Washington waterfront. Exactly. The gazebo area. Yep. Next to the estuarium. Yep. And of course, uh, the tonight is Greenville Grooves. Uh, Calvin DeShield, Cal De uh, Carol yeah. DeShield, the. Uh, uh, <laughs> telling you i was up way too late watching the <laughs> last two nights i've been up way too late not enough sleep uh, the greenville grooves concert carol de shield and the the jazz band that we playing some motown that'll be cool some other stuff tonight that starts at 5 30 30 mm -hmm. at the town common and then of course the washington summer festival trent mcgee is here this morning with sports we'll get to mcgee in a second uh the g-man mark gentner from witn at the news desk and now on the telephone, uh, State Representative Brian Brown with a little uh, update. Uh, Brian Brown got involved in the city council uh, here in Greenville last night, the discussion about raising city taxes. And uh, I take it that Representative Brown is on his way to Raleigh because I think the House goes into session at about 8.30 this morning. So I'm glad we were able to catch you before that. Good morning, Representative Brian Brown. How are you? Good morning, Henry. How are you? I'm doing good. Are you getting ready to walk into session? We go in at 8.30 for the final vote on the House budget. So yeah. Yesterday was a, a long day. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that if you got a minute. But let, let me ask you about topic A first. Greenville City Council went ahead and voted last night uh, to uh, pass their budget, including a two-cent uh, uh, property tax increase. And uh, there were a lot of people that spoke out against that. There were a lot of reasons not to do it. There were a lot of reasons they said to do it. But, you know, one of the reasons not to do it last night was the fact that uh, I understand you and I hadn't talked about this yet, but I heard Tom uh, Lamprecht uh, yesterday afternoon talking about the fact that, and then I heard the city uh, attorney during the meeting last night say that you actually weighed in yesterday with the Greenville city attorney and said that you think that the vote that they took last night could have been an illegal vote because they the uh, the, the second cent that they uh, that they voted to increase taxes on Monday night, there was no public hearing held after that vote was taken. That's right. And, you know, I guess I should probably start this off, um, you know, and, and obviously need your help in this, and, and I hope the listeners understand as well that, that as, this, as this begins to spin, um, I, I want listeners to understand that, that I'm not interjecting to try to provide Raleigh control, which will be that spun message. It's more of the <laughs> fact that, you know, the city of Greenville is a creature of the legislature, and, and our job is to provide that oversight when we feel like things are going awry, if you will. Um, so, so that is why I interjected yesterday. There is some concern that statute was not appropriately followed and the procedures according to the timeline in which the, the two various taxes were passed, the budget public hearing was conducted, and the vote on the budget took place. Um, you know, at this point, and, and uh, at the same time, you know, the House is dealing with their budget. Um, so, we, you know, we were trying to use staff as little as possible as we tried to navigate this yesterday, um, knowing what we were dealing with on the House floor yesterday. But it is of their opinion that there are some questions surrounding the timeline and how it pertains to the general statutes and what they should have done procedurally. Um, at this point, what we are looking to potentially do is, is to simply raise our concerns to the treasurer's office and let her make a final determination of whether the procedures were followed according to statute um, regarding the, the additional tax that was, that was passed by the, the council on Monday evening and the public hearing that was held on Monday evening and the actual vote that was taking place last night. Um, you know, regardless of, of, of where the, the 
the decision comes down, we do have to kind of look at it and say, was it handled appropriately for the citizens of Greenville? And, and if we have any type of uh, ability to weigh in on that, we certainly need to do so. And of course, uh, you know, if you do, unfortunately, you'll, you know, it'll be a lot of uh, effort and time put into something that's just going to result in the same thing when it's all over with, because you saw where it went last night. I mean, there, these, these four people are going to vote for a, a, a tax increase anyway. And if they have to help hold another pe public hearing, they'll do that and then vote to have the taxes. But I, but I, you know, I, I think it showed a disrespect. Uh, at best, I mean, the question of whether it's legal or not is something you've raised, and the uh, city attorney last night uh, spoke to that and said, in his legal opinion, that they did not break the statute. I don't really understand how they could say. It, it just seems to me, if the statute says, if you're going to raise taxes, you've got to have a advertised public hearing. I don't know how that could not have n not broken the law because the public hearing was held on Monday night, and then the uh, the vote for a second additional. A penny, uh, another five hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars in in coming out of taxpayers' pockets in Greenville was voted on after the public hearing. So it seems to me that any, you know, I guess you know you you could argue it both ways, saying, well, but we had a public hearing on the budget, and that's all we're required to do. But on an ethical right. level, if you're going to allow, you know, and they did do the right thing last night and open up the public comment period. But again, it had not been legally advertised as a public hearing. So the question that that, that, that that I have is, you know, not a legal one as much as it is an ethical one. The way that this Greenville City Council conducted itself was against its own policies and and was disrespectful uh, to the to the taxpayers of the city, in my opinion. Well, you know, I think, again, to the point, we'll figure out whether the procedure was handled appropriately but but to your point you know i think that we definitely need to provide the citizens with more of an ability to voice their their concerns and their opinions on those things we know where the voting block is and we know what's going to take place what's concerning me more on the side uh, is the fact that you know this city council made statewide news essentially here in the legislature as they removed the cap on the privilege license um, we're floating a bond referendum. We've passed two separate tax increases, one of which where, where a council member was not present. Um, I, I, I certainly have a great deal of concern, and the citizens of Greenville should have a great deal of concern. The mayor said it the other day when he was on your show, elections have consequences. We're certainly feeling those consequences in, in, within the city of Greenville. But, you know, citizens need to be as, as active as possible moving forward with this council and hold their feet to the fire. And, and uh, you have my word, the citizens of Greenville will have my word that that I will do everything from my power statutorily to ensure that things are followed uh, with the proper with the proper protocol moving forward. And we appreciate that. Let me let me ask you this question: the the other thing that uh, that, that 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 is the connection between the legislature is this continued um, uh, uh, co the continued comments which we heard over and over and over again last night from. Three of the four people who, you know, my city council person didn't speak last night. He had no opinion on anything, I guess. He didn't say a word. But, you know, Rick Crossgury didn't say anything. Rick Smiley, Calvin Mercer, uh, and uh, Marion Blackbird said, all three said repeatedly last night, the reason they had to put that other one cent sales tax, uh, one cent property tax in last night was because of the action that you and the legislature took to. Uh, to to uh, curtail their ability to raise business license fees, uh, and I and, and again, this is something that's been on the drawing board and discussed, and a lot of concern about this for a long time uh, at the state legislature. But what's your opinion of that? I mean, you're getting the blame. The legislature's getting the blame for Greenville having to raise taxes. Well, you know, we're always going to get the blame. Um, we're going to get the blame because we're making the tough decisions of doing good things for our business community in this state, like doing away with, with a privilege license that's, that's being very abused across this state. Um, I think the realistic uh, thing to look at is we really don't truly know the, the actual financial impact that it's going to have on Greenville. There, there's projections, um, but, you know, there's a lot of other things that we've done from a tax standpoint in last year's comprehensive tax reform package that have yet to be realized from a financial impact standpoint as it pertains to, to, to city revenues, as it pertains to statewide revenues. Um, so, you know, we don't have that full effect. So I think to rush to judgment so quickly to say that we have to pass this tax increase because of a privilege license tax, I, I, I think it's just, it doesn't tell the entire story. And, you know, I, again, I look at it and say, 
regardless of whether we did this or not, would we still be having this conversation? And I think that that's, that's something that the citizens really need to talk about um, as they kind of look at the actions of the city council. We're, we're more than happy to take the blame, and, and I'm very proud that we removed the privilege tax license because I think it was an onerous tax on our business community that, that really <laughs> stretched far and wide. Um, you know, I mean, we had, we had um, corporations in the city limits of Greenville paying Mecklenburg, Charlotte privilege license taxes. Um, you tell me in what world that's correct, just for the privilege of doing business in Charlotte. Um, you know, those are taxes that affect the citizens of Greenville, and, and we needed to look at it from a different perspective. And I'm very happy that we did, and the business owners in our community should be very happy that we did that also. Well, it's just a, it's, it's, it's a philosophical difference from what we've seen with the city council in recent years, which, you know, has been to encourage business to try to create additional business and additional investment in the city by the private sector to increase the tax base so we don't have to put the burden of additional property taxes on uh, people who are who, who own property who are, are maybe uh, elderly uh, and need medication uh, the poor who uh, who may have a hard time um, uh, paying additional taxes and w on top of the additional um, uh, utility increases and things like that. And so, you know, it's, it's a difference in philosophy. I think it's a sad difference in the, the, this four to two voting block that we see now here in Greenville is, um, is, is, is pretty obvious where they're going. It's, it's a, uh, it's a raise taxes, spend money on things that, you know, that are questionable. I mean, there were things that were brought up last night in this budget that they can't even tell you what they're, what they've been earmarked for. And, right. and so, I, I don't know, I'm just very concerned about it, and I appreciate you weighing in. Now, let me ask you this question to confirm. Are you saying that you will take this to the state treasurer's office at this point for an opinion? At this, at this point, I will circle back with um, our municipal lead here and our legislative staff. Um, we will review kind of the timeline one more time this morning. Um, and we will go from there. And, you know, her, the opinion last night was that we, she felt as though there was enough questionable actions taken that it should probably be raised to the treasurer's office for a final opinion. Now, when you're looking at the, the, the uh, interpretation of the general statute, you're talking about from our side, legislative staff interpreting the, the general statutes, from the city of Greenville side, the school of government interpreting the, the general statutes as it pertains to the actions that have been taken. Um, but the reality is the only opinion that truly matters in the interpretation of the general statutes regarding the, the procedures that have been taken is the treasurer's office, who will actually you know, give a final determination of whether it was done correctly or not. Um, so, so that's kind of where we are. Again, um, you know, for me, I want to make sure that, that before we do something like escalate it to the treasurer's office with a concern, that, that those concerns are 100% validated by our uh, legislative staff here. I, I know you got to go, but while I got you, have you, have you got another two minutes? Sure. Yeah. I know you sure. got. I don't know how close you are to um, to to the chambers. I'm, I know you got to go I'm in. Sitting in my office, so I'm I'm close enough. All right. Well, you you are <laughs> you're going to have to run to the other building. I'll run. That's all right. <laughs> uh, all right. Very very quickly, uh, the the house will vote on its uh, and pass its budget, I guess, for the third reading today, and then there will be a conference committee set up. All indications are that the Senate and the House, uh, Representative Brown, are about 180 degrees away. And, you know, there's there, the, the, the next move now will be for a conference committee to see if you can bridge those gaps and come up with a, um, a budget by the end of the month of June. Uh, two questions for you. Number one, how optimistic are you that – that the uh, that there'll be a, a deal made in the next couple of weeks uh, on the budget between the House and the Senate and the governor's office as well. Number one and number two, uh, you know, how do you feel about funding? We're all so concerned about funding for the ECU School of Medicine, and I know how hard you've been working on uh, those issues. Uh, how optimistic are you about that? So why don't we start with that one first? How optimistic yeah, are you about the School of Medicine? Um, you know, we're moving in the right direction, Henry. We've done a lot of work, and uh, to the credit of folks that are involved uh, in leadership with with East Carolina as well as Vidic, they've spent a lot of time here in the legislature trying to educate uh, members who may not completely understand the, the significance and the financial impact that it has on the region and, uh, and things. So, so they've done a great job with that, and, and I commend them for it. There's still some work to be done. Um, you know, the big items like uh, SATCA is in the House budget. 
and it will remain in the House budget and be passed back over to the to the Senate for you know, during conference. Uh, we we fixed UPL as 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 best as we could fix it at this point regarding some of the funding mechanisms for Vidant and ECU. Um, there's still some discrepancies in the numbers, which will throw it into conflict and allow us to continue to have the conversation throughout the conference uh, committee process. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm extraordinarily optimistic on some levels, and, and I think that, you know, uh, on other levels, some of it, what is in the House budget now will likely stand, um, which, is, which is definitely concerning. You mean in the Senate budget? No, I, when I when I think some of the some of the assessment numbers for the, for the Medicaid assessments for the physicians, UPL, as well as the uh, the uh, reimbursement status for uh, the the hospital, my concern is is that that may end up staying, which is in I the see. House budget. Yeah. Um, currently, um, again, we're working through that process. And, and for people um, who don't understand that, that you know, the, the there were some things that came over from the Senate you were trying to get out, and you've worked you've worked I know with your colleagues in the House, but what I hear you saying is you couldn't get them all out. We couldn't get them all out. We did get things adjusted. We got some of the assessments decreased. Um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work on it um, to get it to a place where it's going to have to continue to be discussed. But it's still not perfect. It's still not exactly what, obviously, what I want, and certainly not what uh, the folks at Biden or ECU would like to see as a final product. But the good news is that it's still a work in progress. We still have good leadership here in the House that's willing to continue working on it, and, and, I, and I think that we'll continue to move it. I think some of the items are just very difficult lifts for a short session and a, and a budget that is uh, taking slight tweaks, and it's very difficult to move some of the money within the HHS budget to, to try to change some of the funding mechanisms that are being proposed. And uh, do, do you will continue work? Do, do you 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 optimistic that there's going to be a deal with the House and the Senate in the next? Uh, I, I guess you, I guess the projected date to get out of the short session is June 30th, right? It, it is. Um, the, the, the Senate actually uh, passed a resolution uh, earlier this week to to adjourn uh, signing die on uh, the 27th of this month. So you know we could be out as early as the 27th. As of right now, the timeline that we're looking at is the end of next week to have the budget agreed upon or not agreed upon. Right. Um, I would say that there's a lot of good things in the budget that both sides agree on. Probably the big points that we're you know, concerned about on both sides is certainly education and Medicaid funding particularly. So those will be the those will be the two areas where most of the time will be spent and where we will have to come to some type of agreement on the rest of the budget. I think we will align pretty well with and and uh, come together on. All right, uh, you better go. You're going to be late for the House session. Thank you, Representative Brown. It's always great uh, to uh, talk to you. You're always accessible, and we appreciate uh, your involvement and looking out for the citizens of Greenville as well. You're doing a great job. Thank you very much. I I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to being back in Greenville later this afternoon. And, and we'll be we'll be there, of course, uh, doing our show live at the legislature next Thursday morning, and we definitely want to get you on for that. I so look forward we'll to be it. talking about that as well. Thank you, Brian. Sounds great. Representative Thanks, Brian Brown, state representative from here in Pitt County, and again, we will be broadcasting live from the legislature next Thursday morning. And um, special thanks to our sponsors. We had another sponsor. Uh, sign on yesterday. Potash Corp is going to be on uh, with us. Potash Corp Aurora. So uh, uh, thanks to Potash for being one of our sponsors of our Live at the Legislature program, as well as Vidant Health. And so uh, that will be coming to you live from the legislature. We're going to be doing our show next Thursday morning, June 19th. And you can hear from Brian's voice that the stuff is heating up there in Raleigh. And it's interesting that he says that, you know, this... Uh, this, this vote with the city council tax increase last night may go to the state treasurer's office today. <laughs> wait wait till you hear the spin coming out of the city council then about, why don't those state legislators leave us alone and stay out of our business? And here's the answer to that. Anytime you get asked that, here's the answer. Because you won't stay out of our business, and we're the taxpayers, and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and somebody's got to oversee you. So there you go. There's my feeling about that. 23 after the hour, let's take a break and come back. When we return, news headlines from WITN. The G-Man's got that. And uh, some folks stopping by from the community to kind of update us on some other things happening as we roll through June 13th. It's Friday the 13th, everybody. We'll be right back. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new 
Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Football fans, see the tradition, the excitement, the hard-hitting action this fall in Dowdy Pickland Stadium as the Pirates kick off their inaugural season in the American Athletic Conference and host in-state rival North Carolina. With a bowl victory and conference MVP at quarterback, the Pirates are poised for great things. We challenge you to be, live, and give undaunted as part of the fan base at second to none. Purchase your East Carolina football season tickets today by calling 1-800-DIAL-ECU or visit ecupirates.com. <laughs> Yes, you can have it all. Quality flooring, expert assistance, free in-home estimate, professional installation. It's all here during the National Gold Tag Flooring Sale. And did we say lowest prices of the year? Dream it, plan it, live it today. Abbey Full Service Flooring, Fire Tower Road, Winterville. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a live-in manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or lease the all-new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. All right, back on Talk of the Town here uh, Friday morning, Friday the 13th. And uh, coming up in a couple of minutes, uh, a couple of friends are going to stop by here. I just uh, I just went out there and saw Robin Daly is in my lobby. Robin's a long time uh, one of the one of the best public educators I think in the state of North Carolina. She was a principal here, and uh, she was my daughter's principal years ago. And she's uh, there's a group called Parents of Public Education, Parents for Public Education, and uh, they are going to talk to us about that. The uh, They've got a consultant in from uh, Mississippi, one of the national consultants, Joanne Mickens, is going to be here as well. And so that is coming up in just a minute. But first, it's time for news. Our news update this hour brought to you by Suddenlink. Let's go to the news desk now from WITN. Here is general manager, uh, the G-man himself, Mark Gintner, with the latest update. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Henry. Greenville residents should prepare their personal budgets for higher taxes. The Greenville City Council meeting got heated as members passed a new budget which includes a two-cent increase in property tax for Greenville residents. It equates at least to an additional $30 each year on a property worth $150,000. The measure was passed 4 to 2 Thursday evening at City Hall by Council Members Calvin Mercer, Marion Blackburn, Rick Smiley, and Rick Crosskery. Council Members Rose Glover and Candy Smith voted against it, and the budget takes effect July 1st. Police are looking for two men in connection with a series of home break-ins. Greenville police say they have warrants out for 18-year-old David Pope and 21-year-old Sharon Ford. The two face more than a dozen charges each in connection with home break-ins over the past month on Addison Court, Royal Drive, Trafficker Drive, Crooked Creek Drive, and Tolls Cove Road. The police say the two were seen driving a silver or gray Nissan Sentra with a dent in the rear driver's side. The vehicle has North Carolina tag CBL7191. 
Anyone with information on Pope or Ford should call Greenville Police 252-329-4300. Fishing continues today at the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament, and one crew is likely still feeling the sting of missing a $306,000 prize by less than 10 pounds. Avadi brought in a 491.4-pound marlin, just shy of the 500 pounds needed to snag the fabulous fisherman prize. While two other boats have come in with fish over 500 pounds, neither had paid the entry fee for that particular prize. Avadi is now in third place behind Inspiration and Eyecatcher, and the fishing continues today and tomorrow. The two people accused of abandoning nine newborn puppies have bonded out of jail. Ricky Porter and Justin McGee have been each charged with nine counts of misdemeanor cruelty to animals and nine counts of animal abandonment. Their bonds have been set at $25,000, and we checked the jail in Greenville this morning, and the two are no longer inmates, but they have a court date scheduled for later this month. Today marks the start of the summer for the city of Washington. It's the 31st annual Washington Summer Festival. The music, rides, food, and fun kicks off at 5 p.m. this afternoon and runs until 9. And you can head back out at 10 a.m. Saturday morning and stay until 9 in the evening. The Embers, featuring Craig Willard, will be playing live at 7 tonight. And expect a show in the sky with fireworks to cap the night at 9. Our own Lynette Taylor will be there to show you around the festival tonight, starting on WITN News at 5. And Greenville has a pretty great concert event of its own going on tonight. The first ever Greenville Grooves event is taking place at Greenville Town Common. The music festival features local jazz legend Carol DeShiel and some surprise musical guests. It starts at 5.30 p.m. and is billed to be a family atmosphere. And that's your latest update. All right, very good. Thank you much, uh, Marky. Marky Mark. Let's go to uh, McGee now with our weather update. What you got, McGee? Scattered showers and storms during the evening, uh, during the afternoon hours. Today, winds uh, could pick up this afternoon. A chance of rain 60% for tonight. Scattered showers and storms, especially during the evening. Lows around 68 degrees, a 50% chance of rain for your Saturday. Mostly cloudy in the morning. Then isolated thunderstorms may develop later in the day with highs around 85 degrees, a 30% chance of rain. A stray thunderstorm or shower still possible for Saturday night with lows around 63. And for Sunday, hopefully things will taper off a bit, mix of cl uh, clouds and sun with highs in the upper 80s and lows in the upper 60s. All right. Uh, and, of course, um, the uh, the weather looks like it's going to be scattered. So I think the I think we'll be okay with the uh, Greenville grooves. By the way, I love the way the G-man said Greenville grooves. <laughs> yeah. Give my Carol to shield like on there. That. I like that. <laughs> and uh, the Washington Summer Festival tonight. They got the embers tonight in Washington? Yep. And the uh, fireworks. And fireworks. And then the uh, North Carolina Symphony. On Sunday in the Washington. evening. What time does that start? That starts at... Um, that would be fun. I think it's to, huh? 7 p.m. somewhere around yeah. there. I think you can... Right. If you bought into the pre-ticket stuff where there's they have uh, like um, seating for uh, uh, folks that... Uh, I guess you get like a dinner with them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's at 5.30, but then I think the concert actually starts at 7. Okay, good. The uh, North Carolina Symphony on the waterfront. That'll be cool. And, and I think the weather's going to be good for that and for our beach party in Atlantic Beach. The Big Kahuna Beach Party at the Double Tree Atlantic. If you're going to be at the Crystal Coast this weekend, stop by the Double Tree and uh, do some shagging there with uh, the Big Kahuna 1 to 4 at the Double Tree and the Atlantic Beach uh, uh, area there uh, at Molly's behind the double tree our news and weather update this hour a service of sudden link and of course sudden link uh, with uh, all those hd tv channels now but in addition to that you can watch live tv on the go with the new sudden link to go app all you got to do is download it on your ipad uh coming soon to your other devices you're going to be able to download it also on your iphone or your uh, your, your, your Galaxy or your Android or whatever you have like I have. You can watch live TV from Fox News, Fox Business, USA, uh, Sci-Fi, NBC Sports, your favorite TV shows and movies on the go for free. You can catch your favorite shows from, uh, shows from NBC, Bravo, Oxygen, and many more. And, of course, if you're still on the dish uh, and you're disappointed with that long-term satellite contract, now's the time to bundle and save more during the big switch event from Suddenlink Switch up to Suddenlink now. Get SL200 HDTV and 15 meg internet on the bundle package at just $59 a month. Also, uh, you can add a home phone to that for just $10 a month. Get Suddenlink's 30-day money-back guarantee, and we promise guarantee. No contract required and a 12-month price guarantee. You're guaranteed a lot. 
Get Suddenlink's best product lineup by switching up now. Call Suddenlink at 866-432-1184. 866-432-1184. And if it does rain this weekend, you can stay home and watch some of the great Suddenlink uh, video on-demand movies, including Lone Survivor, RoboCop, Son of God, Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, Nonstop, all showing now. Showing right now on video on demand on Suddenlink. All right, it's eight thirty four. Do you have something else that you want to say? You're looking very lucky. no. I just came to sit back down beside you, trying to get ready for our guest. It's great to great to have you back, Yeah, Good to be back. All right, let's take a break. Uh, parents for public schools of Pitt County. Going to find out about that coming up next. Stay with us. More talk of the town for Friday, June thirteenth. Be right back. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has your new truck this summer. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 or lease it for only $139 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Exclusively Cherry. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752 8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. At the law firm of Hardy and Hardy, we don't simply take cases, we take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy and Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. And we're back at Boyd's Carpet in Winterville on Fire Tower Road. I'm standing here with Jason Boyd. Jason, beautiful, newly remodeled showroom here. Tell us about it. Well, Hank, as we go into our 20th year here, we remodeled our showroom. We've got things kind of refixed up nice for everybody because it is the spring here in 2014. We want everybody to come see us. Of course, you know, we're located here on Fire Tower Road. Our phone number is 321-7066. We'd like everybody to come see what's happening here at Boyd's Carpet. And you've even expanded your staff for the spring. T tell, talk about your new staff. Well, last year was one of our best years ever, and we expanded our uh, staff to make it uh, more suitable for all our customers because we're offering more than just carpet, our wood, our ceramic tile, our LVT, and we want everybody to make sure that we do our shop at home service so we got plenty of people to serve you. And tell us about some special financing offers you may have available. Yes, come see us again for our 12-month financing with GE Card Service. So we're here at Boyd's Carpet uh, anytime here to serve you. Summer savings have arrived at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Save up to $4,000 on a new Dodge Journey or at least the all-new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Okay, welcome back. Talk of the town and uh, the... Uh, Guest in the studio now with us, one of my oldest friends here in Greenville, Robin Daly, has joined us. I owe this woman a lot. She did a lot for my children back in the day. Robin is uh, is is now. What is your title with uh, with with this new? We're, we're here to talk about parents for public schools of Pitt County. What are you doing with that? Well, I'm working with the Parent Engagement Program, yeah. and that's what we're going to share with you information about the chapter and about that program today. And also in the studio with us is Joanne Meekins. Joanne is with the National Organization Parents for Public Schools. She's uh, in today from uh, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and she is the Chapter Services Director for the National Organization. How many states do you cover? You must spend a lot of time on the road or maybe I, in the air. I have been lately. Um, we are, we're in 13 states, yeah. and the most distant one is Hawaii and was there recently, but we have um, chapters in 13 states. That's great. Yes. Now, Parents for Public Schools, Robin, exactly what is it? 
because it's been around for a while, but it was it kind of got inactive in Pitt County for a while, but in the last couple of years, it's gotten very active. Right. We've just started a new chapter, and the basic um, premise for Parents for Public Schools is to strengthen the Pitt County public schools by engaging, educating, and mobilizing not only parents, but everybody in the community. And so that's what we're really working on right now. Um, Kathy Herring is our chapter president, and what happened is a lot of committed parents got together and just said, um, we need to work together to make things stronger in our district. Mm -hmm. We've had PTAs, we've had PTOs, we have academic boosters, but not every group in our system are the same. So we're trying to develop a network so that all schools can work together and find out best practices that other schools are using to strengthen the school for all children. So these parents that started this group want the best for their children, but they also want the best for all children in the district. Yeah, uh, and Kathy Herring, of course, has been very active uh, as a parent in, in Pitt County Schools and doing a great job and doing a lot of organizing. And, and you're seeing a lot more of that these days, Joanne. Uh, mm -hmm. Public education has its problems. And, yes. uh, and you know, what, I, I, think, I think this is the solution, getting parents involved. And yes. so I really salute what you guys are doing. Well, we feel that parents have a real vested interest because it's our children yeah. and who, who knows them better and who's, who are better advocates for them than their parents. And so we, we believe that parents are an asset for the school district and we want um, the school district to take advantage of those assets. But we also feel that if parents are going to contribute as much as they can, then they need to be trained and informed. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we're trying to do. Robin, uh, what's what's coming up? T tell us how parents should and can get involved in your uh, Parents for Public Schools organization here in Pitt County. Okay, well, um, you can go on the website, ppspittcounty.org, and we have lots of information. That's how you would join, and you would, um, there's no cost. We wanted to make no roadblocks for joining this organization. We feel like we have great partners in this organization. We United Way is our partner, certainly the school district and um, the Greenville Pitt County Chamber of Commerce. We have three main initiatives that we have going this year. One is school tours. We feel like a lot of times when new people come to Greenville, they don't know exactly where to go. So mm -hmm. if they want to go on a tour, we're going to start providing those opportunities. We've done several thus far. We're going to have some community conversations where we go to different business or organizations and if you would like to um, have somebody um, come and speak to your organization to get a pulse for what the, the issues are we'll be glad to do that and then our third initiative that we're really here today to talk about is the parent engagement program and that's what we've had the training for and Joanne has worked with us this week doing the training and she might like to share a couple of things that um, you've feel have happened as we've worked with seven people this week who want to be trainers in our district. So that's why you're here? Yes, I was here to provide training for the parent engagement program and work with a wonderful group of seven uh, ladies who um, have trained to become facilitators in that program. And the program is, is, is really the overarching goal of PEP, which is the acronym for our program, is to um, improve student achievement. And so we believe that the way to do that is to remove barriers to learning. And so this week we talked about the fact that there are barriers to learning, uh, not only at school, but at home and in the community. So we talked about those barriers, uh, what are some of the protective factors we can put in place for, uh, for um, students, and then how then can we all work together to uh, improve student achievement. All right, great stuff. So, so, uh, so tell us what to do, Robin. How do, okay. we get, how do we get involved? Okay, well, if you would like to be involved in this program um, this year, for the next, this year's the first class, next year will be the second class, we have some grants that we've received. So we will not have to charge anybody any fees for taking these programs, but the, the national program or curriculum is sold to other districts or LEAs for $45,000. So this 
program is worth $1,800 for any participant who is selected. So there is an application process. You know, we want to tell all the business and um, leaders in our community that parents will be developing leadership skills, problem solving skills, team building skills, lots of skills that are not only going to help them become advocates for their children and other children in the district, but hopefully will become better employees. So for example, mm -hmm. The man we met outside as he was leaving, <laughs> who was the basketball coach at North Bend High School. Coach Carr. <laughs> coach <Yes>. Carr <laughs> says he's very interested in yeah. becoming um, involved in the Parents for Public Schools. Joanne gave him the card, told him how he could join free. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe you'd like to take this class and maybe Henry Hinton would sponsor you to be able to get a substitute <laughs> for, <laughs> could get a substitute so that he could uh, come to these six days of training. Yeah. He says he's very interested. So yeah. that's how, similar to the Chamber of Commerce, how right. we've done the Leadership Institutes yeah. there, we're hoping that people will be allowing their uh, employees to do those kinds of things. Well, we would certainly do that. If well, he's interested, interested yeah. so I need to call yeah. Coach Carr. Yeah, you, you definitely do, and he'd be <laughs> well, a good thank one, you. too. And, and again, there's no cost to someone. You're just no. looking for people that are willing to make that kind of a commitment to be involved at that level. Right, exactly. and the reason there's no cost this year is because of a Z. Smith Reynolds grant grant because of the Smith Family Foundation funding that was given to us in a matching proposal and United Way. So we have mm -hmm. funding right now, so we will not have to make uh, parents pay any fees at all. So it's really a wonderful opportunity. So we'd like to close by saying, please join us as <laughs> uh, online as a member of Pitt County uh, Public Schools, Parents for Public Schools. And then if you'd like to be involved in this class that starts um, in October, um, applications are online, and you just need to fill them out by July 31st. All right, very All right. good. And what's the website again? It's www.ppspittcounty.org. PPS, Parents for Public Schools. PPS, yes. Pitt County. Dot org. Dot org. Org. Dot org. Yes. Org. Yes. O -R -G. yes. All right, Joanne, how long are you going to be in Pitt County training these folks? Well, I came in on Monday, and I'm leaving this afternoon. Okay. So I've been here all week. This is my last day in town. Right. And so it's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It's a great way to end the week. Yeah, well, it's, it's good to have you here this morning. And if you're working with folks like this, oh, yeah. you've probably had great support. We, it has been and great. You're and, here to support them, but yes. you've probably had great response, I guess. And I want to comment that I feel that our chapter is getting great support in this community. This Good. is just another uh, indication of that. Well, there are a lot of problems with Pitt, with, with, I was about to say Pitt County schools. There are a lot of problems with public Pumpkin. schools everywhere. Yes. And, and they're, uh, you know, uh, if, if parents have children or grandchildren and they don't get involved, shame on us, you know? Exactly. It's, it's, it's got to be a, a community effort uh, to try to turn schools around. And, you know, hearing what you said about uh, the, 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 the distractions and the problems outside it's, the schoolhouse mm -hmm. are a big part of that. Right. So, I mean, that's where the community comes in. We've got to do better. Well, I think with our new superintendent here, Dr. Linker's very receptive to parents. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to have us more involved, and he wants to have more options for all children. And yeah. that's aligned with that's national goals. Yeah. Great to see you both. Thanks for coming. Thank in. you. Our Robin, Thanks. Robin Thank you. Daly and Joanne, get Mickens. it right, Meekins. Yes. Is it yes. Mickens? Yes. Mickens from uh, Parents for Public Schools, Pitt County. And uh, we hope that people will learn more about this group and get involved. All right, we got McGee and Sports coming up. More talk of the town here for Friday right after this. Hi, I'm Jane Williams with TAB Premium Built Homes and I'm the interior designer for the Southern Living Custom Builder Program Showcase Home. This beautiful 5200 square foot Southern Living Home is located on a beautiful corner lot in the Bedford subdivision located off of Chesapeake Place in Greenville, North Carolina. This home features a unique blend of modern and rustic style. Some of the features of the home are the control floor system, an outdoor cooking porch, walnut floors, custom molding throughout, blue stone porches, clawfoot tub in the master with a large walk-in shower. Furniture and accessories throughout the home have been provided by local Greenville businesses, Bostic Suck Furniture, Fabric and Drapery Design, City Art Gallery, and Pier 1 Imports. This home will be open for the last three weekends of the month of June. General admission tickets can be purchased for $10 at greenvilleshowcasehome.com by phone at 252-565-8310 or at either one of our office locations in Greenville or New Bern. 
Proceeds raised will be donated to Operation Finally Home, a charity that provides mortgage-free homes to our wounded warriors, as well as the Ronald McDonald House of Eastern North Carolina. To learn more about the Southern Living Custom Builder Showcase Home, visit GreenvilleShowcaseHome.com or call 252-565-8310. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Eastern Carolina, want big savings on a huge selection of 2014 new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs? Greenville Toyota's got it. Looking for new Toyotas with discounts up to $5,000 off or payments from $139 a month? Greenville Toyota's got it. Want to save thousands with 0% financing? Greenville Toyota's got it. How about covered maintenance for life? Greenville Toyota's got it. If you are looking to get it all, give us just 15 minutes to show you how we can lower your current payment, and you'll see why Greenville Toyota's got it. Okay. Okay, welcome back to <laughs> to Talk of the Town brought to you by my friend Scott Shook at Scott and Stringfellow BB and T. Are we moving now again? We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. Okay, we got it. The uh, weather uh, is brought to you by Scott Shook and his partners uh, Thomas Rouse and Linda Poff at BB and T Scott and Stringfellow for more than a century BB and T Scott and Stringfellow has been providing comprehensive customized investment guidance to help their clients reach their financial goals. And uh, in the last week, Scott and Thomas, Scott Shook and Thomas Rouse have moved over to BB&T, Scott and Stringfellow. People in uh, Greenville certainly know Scott and Thomas and the great work they do uh, advising people on their financial investments. And if you need uh, an appointment, I got a phone number for you to call to set that up. Uh, you know, it's very hard today to decide what to do with your money. You can't get any money off of, you can't get any interest off of CD rates. And, um, you know, I've, uh, I, I, I know that Scott can sit down with you and design something that is safe, uh, or you can be as uh, aggressive as you want to be in the stock market, but he's got other things that he can talk to you about as well. And I would highly advise you if you're interested in uh, taking a look at some new strategies to give Scott uh, a call, Scott Shook, Thomas Rouse. Here's the telephone number, 252-321-7808, 321-7808 for Scott Shook at BB&T Scott & Stringfellow, which is a division of BB&T Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. And uh, before the weekend is over, I may uh, give uh, Shook some financial advice on the golf course. I saw Scott last night. Congratulated him. And did you tell him thank you for being a sponsor of Talk of the Town? Of course I did. He's been a contributor uh, for many years by texting me every time I yeah. say something he disagrees with. Yep. But now he's actually an advertiser, which is amazing. It is. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, again, I want to remind you that I uh, had Brian Brown on earlier this morning. We're going to be live at the legislature next Thursday morning, the 19th, Thursday, June 19th, live at the legislature. We'll be broadcasting live from the Daily Planet Cafe, which is right across from the front door of the legislative building, right on uh, Jones Street in Raleigh. And um, we've asked the governor to be on. We've asked Tom Tillis, the Speaker of the House, uh, Brian Brown, we just mentioned. We'll get some other legislators on. And uh, special thanks to our sponsors that have stepped up so far on this Vitant Health. And yesterday, Potash Corporora stepped up. 
and a big way to uh, help underwrite the cost of uh, broadcasting live from the legislature. So thanks to uh, Ray McKeithen and all the folks at Potash and also uh, Steve Lawler and Dave Herman and all the folks at Vidant Health. And we're hoping that we're hoping that uh, Dr. Herman and uh, Steve Lawler can be in Raleigh with us and be on the air that morning. That's, that's the plan. Great. So uh, we'll be talking more about that. All right, uh, seven now in front of the hour. Let's check some sports headlines. Here's McGee on sports. Round two of the U.S. Open getting underway right now in Pinehurst. After round one, Martin Keimer leads the field after a 565, the lowest score in three opens at Pinehurst. A host of players are just three shots off the lead, including Brant Snedeker and Phil Mickelson is tied with a host of players as well who are five shots back after an even par after round, even par day uh, on Thursday. NBA Finals game four last night, the Spurs over the Heat. 108 to 86. San Antonio now has a three games to one lead. It can close things out Sunday night. Tip off set for eight o'clock in Game Five there in San Antonio. College World Series gets underway this weekend as well. Uh, Virginia and Ole Miss, a game we're looking at, uh, would take place on Sunday. A couple of coaches in the College World Series also rumored uh, as potential candidates to replace Billy Godwin at East Carolina. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. And if you're interested, the World Cup going on, but what stole the headlines on Thursday was the protest between police and the. Uh, or the, actually the rioting uh, from protesters with police before the World Cup began, just hours before the first match. A couple of reporters from CNN injured in that. Also some uh, protesters injured, injured as well, so hopefully that is I missed all that. I yeah. was too busy watching the city council meeting last yeah. night. Yeah. So. Playing with my grandchildren. There you go. All right, very good. Uh, a couple of reminders for you, too, as we uh, get ready to leave you here on Friday. Tomorrow at uh, Dave Davis's East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, the NC Packs for Patriots group is going to be out there collecting things for uh, some of our sol soldiers in war zones. So here's the deal. If you're out and about tomorrow, anytime between 9 and 3.30, uh, and you're, you're, you know, you're out doing some uh, shopping or whatever, pick up some extra things for our troops and drop them by uh, at Chip Davis's uh, place over there. Dave Davis's East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. They're going to be, you know, some of our soldiers are, are – um, deployed now to areas of the uh, the world that have extreme hot weather conditions. We're talking Indonesia, Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa, Malaysia, some of those places. And they uh, they really need some help. And so this NC Packs for Patriots group, Ann Eleanor and some other folks here in Greenville heavily involved in that, doing some great work. They, uh, they're asking you tomorrow to stop by the dealership at Dave Davis's place and uh, bring some stuff for the troops. Here are some things that you can uh, go by and buy tomorrow and take by for the troops. Uh, hand sanitizer, powdered drink mixes, sunscreen and tubes, lip balm, cool wraps, insect repellent, freeze pops, body wash, fly paper. Uh, let's see some other ones here. I can pull them down. Uh, wipes, jerky, eye drops, things like that. And, of course, you can also donate money uh, for shipping. Uh, again, uh, the group will be out collecting these things tomorrow at uh, with Chip Davis's uh, dealership at the Dave Davis's East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. And that is going to be going on from 9 tomorrow morning to 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. So please, uh, if you are are so inclined uh, to do something for our troops, there's a great way to support our troops that are not only in harm's way, but they're in heat's way this time of the year. Pretty, uh, pretty difficult uh, place to have to be. Uh, also, uh, some other plugs I want to mention. Uh, let's not forget that coming up on Tuesday, McGee, tell them about the half-price golf uh, That's right. opportunity. Finally, we've got our new deal with uh, Scotch Hall Preserve, and uh, that's at, coming up. Tell tees them about off that. at 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning, uh, June 17th. You get two rounds of golf with cart included for just 60 bucks at Scotch Hall Preserve and Arnold Palmer Signature Course uh, there in Bertie County. One of the best courses, I think, certainly in the east uh, and, and arguably the state of North Carolina. So 9 a.m. is when the promotion begins, the half, uh, half price promotion. But do not call before 9 a.m. on Tuesday, 355-1037. Yep. Uh, people have been asking me, are you going to do Scotch Hall Preserve with a half price golf club? And the answer to that is yes. Daniel Summerall up there, who's uh, the uh, head golf professional. Uh, we normally do it a little bit earlier in the year, but uh, actually I think we did it last year, maybe just uh, the first week of June. So we'll be doing it like second week of June this year, second or third. Uh, but da Daniel got married. 
and he was on his honeymoon for and uh, what out was of he work thinking? for a while. I don't, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> And so uh, yeah. we finally connected with Daniel and got our deal worked out. So the WT I got, and by the way, there's some more half price golf coming too. So, but you know, it's it's one of the favorite things that we do here on the show uh, and on WTIB is the WTIB Golf Club, where we offer the best courses east of Raleigh for half price. Yep. And so coming up uh, next Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., Scotch Hall Preserve, the beautiful Arnold Palmer golf course talk of the town brought to you today by seaboard security you know it only takes a few seconds for a burglar to break into your home or office act quickly and call seaboard security systems in washington to protect your belongings seaboard security is specialized in securing museums banks homes and offices for 50 years with seaboard security you talk to a local person to change your code or address billing issues uh, you're not talking to somebody in kalamazoo so call Seaboard Security. You can visit them online at seaboardsecurity.com for more information if you need a security system. All right. Uh, let's see. Did I get to Michael? Have I gotten all the plugs in? I think we're pretty much done. Don't forget the big uh, beach party at the Doubletree down at uh, uh, the uh, oceanfront at Atlantic Beach on Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4. If you're on the Crystal Coast or you just want to take a day trip, take Dad down there for Father's there Day. There you go. And don't forget, uh, GreenvilleVitalSigns.com, our medical website with Atlantic Gastroenterology, Vitamin Health, uh, 21st Century Oncology, and a lot of other uh, medical practices. And always get your news from GreenvilleHeadlines.com.